Hi, welcome to Hack a Week. We are here on Bald Head Island at the beach in uh, North Carolina. Today we're going to have some fun out here doing some plaster casting in the sand. All you need is some seashells or whatever else you find at the beach, a bucket to mix in, some plaster of Paris, and some water. Plaster of Paris is some pretty neat stuff. It's actually made out of gypsum and when it gets cooked in an oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, some of the water comes out of it and then it turns into calcium sulfate. When you put water back with it, it rehydrates it and then it hardens back up. We'll get more into the chemistry of that a little later in the video. But right now, let's get started playing around with some plaster casting. What you need is a place where there's soft sand, preferably a place where the water washed in overnight, the tide went out and it left the sand nice and soft, like you can see here. Then you need to collect up some seashells and whatever else you find. I've got some little bits of everything here. And then you just press it into the sand. So let's get started doing a little bit of that. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to push into this sand. It's nice and soft here. And I'm just gonna try a little bit of everything. We'll throw some stuff into the uh, foreground and background, as it were. And the trick is to have sand that doesn't lump up and displace too much and keeps the details of all the the little shell lines when you push it in there. And we'll just keep going here. I actually think it would be better if I leave the shells in place because it's going to displace some of the sand as I push it in there. I've got a little claw here someone donated. Okay, I've got a whole bunch of things impressed into the sand here and then I need to lift them all back out. But if I pour something on here without putting a little dam all the way around, my plaster's gonna run everywhere. So now I'm gonna take some sand and really carefully make a little area around the outside that will serve as a dam. And then once we get that built, we'll take out all our pieces and mix up the plaster. Now we'll finish plucking out all the pieces here. Okay, this is ready to pour, so let's mix up some plaster. The correct mix ratio is one part water, two parts plaster. So I'll start out with about half of this container of water in here. And then we'll add the plaster to the water. And I'm just kind of eyeballing this, not really uh, measuring it perfectly, but you should just have a nice soupy consistency if you get it all right. Just add a little bit and stir, add a little bit and stir. Make sure you get all the lumps out. Okay, we've got a pretty good mix going here. Now if you leave this sitting in the bucket, it'll start to harden faster because the chemical reaction produces heat. It's called an exothermic reaction. So if it stays in this bucket, the heat will build up quicker and it will exponentially harden faster. So we, uh, we've got it all mixed up and we'll let it sit for about a minute. Just let it sit there and digest and do its little chemical reaction thing and then we'll pour it into our mold. Okay, we're ready to pour, here we go. Just kind of let it run in there a little at a time. Not too fast because we don't want to move the sand around. A few lumps that I missed there. By the way, if you ever decide to use this for uh, like an art project, casting body parts, be really careful because if you stick your hand in a really large amount of this, believe it or not, it can burn you badly. It gets that hot. There's uh, an instance that happened. It's on the web. Uh, I think it was in England. 
Some girl burned herself really bad to the point where she had to have a few fingers amputated because they did it in a bucket. They didn't do it right. There is a product available for casting body parts that's much safer. So there we go. And we'll just uh, let that sit. It'll start to firm up in about 10 minutes and it will be ready to pull out of the mold in about uh, 30 minutes. It takes like overnight for it to fully, fully cure up. So you have to be careful with it for a while. And once it is all cured, you can still shape it a little bit. That's the neat thing about plaster. So while that's going, maybe we'll make one more somewhere else here in the sand with some other shells and whatnot. All right, I made one more mold with a piece of driftwood, a couple of shells, a nice little curly cube shell there. I've got my plaster mixed, boarded. So I was just scouting around the beach here a bit and found these, some little bird tracks, some seabird tracks. Tracks are fun to uh, cast and plaster to. Let's see if we can capture some of these guys. Got this mixed up pretty thin so it'll run. Hopefully capture the, the tracks without disturbing them too much. Well, someone and their dog walked through a while ago, and I still have a little plaster here. It's pretty thick, but let's see if we can pour it into the mold here. The dog print. Look at this, a big old dog print. That'll be fun. Oh, you could do this with one of your friend's uh, dog footprints next time you go to the beach with him, and you can give it to him as a, a gift. <laughs> back and check on that later. Let's go over and see how our shell mold is doing. Okay, this one's been here for, what, 45 minutes at least? Let's dig it up. Gotta be careful that we don't break it. So I'm gonna dig around and try to lift up from underneath rather than pry on the edges. Lots of sand. This is like archaeology. Bunch of sand to get off from here. So we'll get some of this off and then let it sit here in the sun for a little while. And over here is our doggy footprint. That came out pretty good. There's some doggies playing by the background right now. So I could make dog tracks with this. So we'll get these cleaned off at home and then we'll take a closer look at them. Okay, back at the house and it's rinse time. Just use a toothbrush and a little water here. Water does quite a bit. To clean off all the sand. Woo! It's cool looking. There's all the castings cleaned off. Uh, of course you could do things with these later if you wanted to clean them off a little more and you could color them. Um, get in there with some art paints or dyes or whatever you want and uh, do some pretty interesting things. You could do this background in a sand color and then paint each one of the shells um, however you like. 
And then the tracks are just kind of fun. You could actually do a, a wash on these with one color and then rub them clean and the tracks would show up a little bit highlighted, a little like they are now, only more accentuated. And this was a piece of driftwood, so this could be painted like wood. Anyway, these would be kind of fun, decorative little things just to place around your garden or whatever you want to do with them. It's just a fun thing to do with plaster casting. Of course, the dog print's kind of fun. So that's, uh, that's how the plaster casting in the sand works. You can get all kinds of creative and cast all kinds of things in there. Let's talk a little bit more about the chemistry of plaster. Here we are in the Wikipedia page about plaster, and uh, it's a building material that's used for coating walls and ceilings. It starts out as a dry powder mixed with water. It comes from gypsum, and the gypsum is mined, and the name Plaster of Paris came from a place uh, in Paris, near Paris, I guess, uh, Montmartre, where they mine gypsum. It's uh, also known as alabaster, and it is uh, then cooked at 300 degrees Fahrenheit and that releases uh, some of the water and it turns from uh, calcium sulfate um, dihydrate into calcium sulfate hemihydrate which means there's only one molecule of water shared between each group of calcium sulfate so when you mix it with water again in that uh, 2 to 1 ratio, 2 parts of plaster to 1 part water, you then get the uh, calcium sulfate uh, dihydrate back and it crystallizes and hardens up and turns into plaster or plaster of Paris. And there are some uh, precautions down here about uh, safety. As I mentioned earlier, right here in this area is a little story. Uh, there was a 16-year-old uh, schoolgirl suffered third-degree burns after encasing her hands in a bucket of plaster as part of a school art project in Lincolnshire, England. The burns were so severe that she subsequently had both thumbs and six of her fingers amputated. For this reason, only thin layers of plaster should be used with time to cool in between layers or strips of cloth and plaster laid up in the method used by the medical field. That's if you want to cast uh, a body part or something. In place of plaster, something called alginate can be safely used for casting body parts for whatever reason you may want to do that. And then there's also some uh, things here about uh, inhaling the powder, which is not good. It's a very fine powder. So anyway, that's uh, a little bit more about the chemistry of plaster of Paris. Let's get back to our uh, castings. Well, that's about it for this week. This was a fun little beach activity you could do with your family, your kids, your friends, uh, whatever, and uh, take some stuff down there and do some sand casting. Get creative, pick up whatever you find on the beach. Um, you could do your hands, your feet, all kinds of things. So, uh, hope you learned a little bit more about Plaster of Paris, and go out and get creative casting things. Till next time, keep on hacking.